Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show the game between Rashid Nejmedinov and Oleg Chernikov. This game was played in Rostov, Russia, in 1962. Rashid Nejmedinov had white pieces and he started with e4. Chernikov played c5, Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, knight to c6, d4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes on d4. g6, Chernikov is playing accelerated dragon variation of Sicilian defense. Knight to c3, bishop to g7, bishop to e3, knight to f6, bishop to c4, Chernikov cast at kingside, bishop to b3, knight to g4. Is knight free to take? It is. Nearly. Knight takes on d4. And threat is something like d5. Rashid played queen to h4. Now, knight takes bishop comes to mind. But then pawn takes knight and the rook would be on the open file or semi-open file. We have queen to a5. Castling. If bishop takes on d4, bishop takes bishop, and after castling, perhaps bishop to f6. In the game we have castling, bishop to f6. It is white to move. We have reached the critical position of the game. What would you do in this position if you had white pieces? If you wish, you can pause the video, but don't pause it for too long, because you will not guess the move that Rashid played. Ready to see the move? Believe it or not, queen takes a bishop on f6, queen sacrifice, I hear myself stating the obvious. Well, if I was white, I would move my queen to safe square like queen to h6, but I'm not a genius like Rashid. We have queen takes bishop on f6. And now, if pawn takes queen, then bishop takes on d4. So in the game we have knight to e2 check. Knight takes knight, and now pawn takes queen. Knight to c3, knight is going to d5. Rook to e8, knight to d5, attacking the pawn on f6. Rook to e6, bishop to d4, pressure is on the pawn, king to g7, rook from a to d1, d6, rook to d3, the rook lift planning rook to f3 attacking the pawn on f6, bishop is developed, rook to f3, pressure is on the pawn, Bishop to b5, attacking the rook on f1. Rashid didn't move the rook. He played bishop to c3, attacking the queen. Queen to d8. Knight takes on f6. And bishop to e2. Another critical position. Why to move? What would you do in this position if you had white pieces? To appreciate the move played in the game, you can pause the video and you can try to find the winning move for white. Ready? Rashid captured the pawn on h7 with knight. And Chernikov played king to g8. Why not king takes on h7? Then we would have this continuation. Rook takes on f7 check. And after king to h6, 
bishop takes rook. If queen goes to e8, then check, g5, check, and after king to h7, rook to e1, and white has a decisive advantage. So in the game we have king to g8, rook to h3, rook to e5, f4, bishop takes rook. What a wild game. King takes bishop, rook to c8, and Rashid played bishop to d4. Boy oh boy. Pawn takes rook comes to mind. But Rashid has a different plan. I think we can make a conclusion that Rashid's moves are very difficult to predict. So we have bishop to d4, b5, knight to g5, pressure is on the pawn on f7, rook to c7, defending the pawn on f7. So he thought, but here it comes, bishop takes on f7, rook takes bishop. Why did Rashid sacrifice the bishop? Have a good look. What would you do in this position if you had white pieces? This was the reason for the sacrifice. Check. King takes rook. What else? If king goes to g7, then rook takes queen. Okay, so we have king takes rook on h8. Knight takes rook, forking the king and the queen. This is check. King to h7. Knight takes queen. Rook takes pawn on e4, attacking the bishop. Knight to c6. Rook takes pawn on f4, check. King to e2. And believe it or not, black resigned. Is it too early to resign? Maybe you think it's too early because you didn't play against Rashid Nedvedinov. What a game and what a great attacking player Rashid was. That is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.